Good morning, degenerates, and welcome to another episode of Boring Crypto IO, a place where I read you the boring crypto news every morning, Monday through Friday, unless I have to work a real person job, which was yesterday. <laughs> every morning, Monday through, through Friday, just so you don't have to. Guys, my name is not Port, and I'm your host. And I'm still trying to get over this damn cold. Uh, guys, smash the like button, turn the bell for notifications, subscribe to the channel, and let's get boring. The Bitcoin bull cross is about to hit for the first time since 2016. Um, yeah, we're going to learn what a Bitcoin bull cross is. <laughs> Nothing left to decide. Former SEC chair says Bitcoin ETF is inevitable, yet it's the 9th. They have till the 10th. Not looking good. Spot Bitcoin ETF fee war begins. Issuers amend S-1 filings with lower sponsor fees. Um, yesterday, uh, a lot of the fund, uh, management companies that are applying for spot Bitcoin ETFs started, um, literally out low feeing each other. Um, and we're going to read about that. So with that being said, let's go to the market guys right now. Uh, refresh current market cap sitting at 1.72 trillion, uh, up 3.23 percent uh bitcoin dominance getting up there 53.4 percent eth 16.1 and guay is nice and mellow 18 guay will get you that eth transaction guys um fear and greed ticking up 74 fear and greed index guys bitcoin popped out of the ascending triangle that we've been looking at for quite some time um price go up right and we're gonna look at that here shortly but in the meantime uh, let's go ahead and blow through the top 100 outliers. Um, Bitcoin almost an outlier today. Bitcoin up 4.4. Now it's 39% uh, on the day, guys. ETH not really doing too much. Uh, Solana up 8.91. Avalanche 6.61. Injective up 6.2. Optimism 5.51 depth side, 12.28% for Lido Dow. 6.48 is the upside for Stacks. 9.56 for Caspa. Celestia Tia up 15.76%. Get it. Get get it. 5. Point, oh wow, I just jumped. 6.48% for Mantle. 19.74 for Bitcoin Satoshi's vision. What in the absolute shit? <laughs> Would it be absolutely diabolical if uh, BlackRock and all these people decided to pull a, um, a bait switch on us and open up spot Bitcoin ETF with Satoshi's mission? I'd shoot myself in the face. Uh, Rune, 5.3 to the upside. Uh, render up 6.86%. Helium ripping 31.39% of the upside. BitTorrent up 5%. WeMix up 10.93. Bonk. Meme coins, guys. 27.14 of the upside. 6.98 the upside for ASTR. 7% the upside for Woo. Woo woo. Uh, AKT up 6.19%. 9.66 for XEC. Oof. Clay down 24.964%. AXL down 6.31%. Uh, GMT down 10.93%. And Blur taking back into the top 100. Guys, there's your top 100. Bitcoin. Four hour. Um... So this was the original, the big ascending triangle that we were looking at, bull trap. And we broke out and we finally closed a daily above 45,846, guys. Um, now I need at least another day or two before I get bullish on this. But going on to the daily reality, 
this is the biggest daily candle we've seen in this pattern with this being like you know like i said no close really um so we'll see uh if it holds i definitely would like it i, I I need at least another daily candle close above uh, 45846 if I believe we're out of this nonsense down here. Okay, that's on the daily. Um, even, I wouldn't be even bear, too bearish if we bounce off the top of this triangle. Let's just call it 45 or 44506. But we need to stay above uh, 45846. We need to be completely bullish and think that we're going to continue moving up to the upside. Okay, um, we're ticking down a little bit right now as we speak. Uh, keep your eye on these two levels, guys. 45,846, hopefully we bounce there. If not, a bounce around the 44,506. Look at her go down. Oh, wow. Wow. There there it goes. Right well, while we're watching this. Well, so much for that, guys, right? We're going to hang out for a couple of seconds to see what this does. I wonder if there's news breaking about the uh, the ETF. This is all two hours old. Oh, nothing here. Well, I can't believe you just caught that on the channel. A big dip. Well, it's all fun and games until Bitcoin decides to be an asshat. Uh, where did it bounce? I mean, it's getting bought up, but it's still looking volatile as shit. Right around 45.5. These are your levels you're looking for, guys. Look for 45.846 to hold or 44.506. If not, nothing has changed. Um, we're back in the channel. Now, what I was going to say, guys, on the one hour I was watching this over the weekend, we put in a, a another mini ascending triangle with a squeeze. I was tracking this. And I mean, it was squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And it kind of looked like it wanted to dip. We got a bull trap and then it ripped. Um, I, I, want, I don't know. I mean, I need to do some research on it, but if someone else knows, if there is a way to, uh, I don't know if you guys can see my charts live. Um, when I do, ch when I'm looking at stuff like this, I wonder if there's a way to do that without me having to like just post screenshots of my, my chart. You can always see what I'm updating and looking at. Like it could potentially help you guys to see what setups I'm looking at, at least on Bitcoin anyway. Um, food for thought if someone knows if that's possible for me to like you could see my charts live let me know how to set that up i don't mind doing that outside of that guys that's bitcoin we're watching to see what this nonsense is all about and uh where she'll land um keep your guys's eye on it nothing's really changed outside of that um potentially putting starting to put in a uh a new ascending channel while I'm looking at it right now. Something along the lines of this ish. Yeah, something, something like this, maybe. Uh, just some food for thought, guys. Bitcoin price volatility lately has been bananas. From this to this to this. I mean, these are these are big swings. These are like three thousand dollar swings, man, out of nowhere. No rhyme or reason. Ah, uh, but with that said, guys, you know the levels. Nothing's really changed. Not financial advice. Not a financial advisor. Don't listen to me. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, let's go back to the four hour. Yeah, 
let's go back to the daily. I'll delete this ascending channel idea. Not, not that necessary. This is a big kicker, I admit. This is what we were watching. If you wanted to, to, to make some money on this breakout, there's your breakout. Now the next thing on the daily, you're hoping for a bounce, a retest, and a bounce. That would be the most bullish scenario, besides price just go up. But that's it, guys. That's all I've got for you for Bitcoin today. Um, it's really volatile right now, which makes me want to jump to uh, uh, X to see if there's anything going on that I'm missing. But um, we'll move past it. Just get on with the news. Uh, the Bitcoin bull cross is about to hit for the first time since 2016. Bitcoin is attempting to print a rare crossover that preceded the Bitcoin price bull run to 20 grand in 2017. Bitcoin is preparing to repeat a rare bullish chart uh, chart move uh, absent for the past eight years. Uh, in a post on X on January 9th, the popular uh, commenter known as Mustache Moustache, Moustache, revealed a key Bitcoin price moving average crossing in the making. Moving average crossover due after eight year hiatus. Bitcoin is back near 50 grand as the crypto market uh, renaissance continues. Excitement over the United States first spot Bitcoin ETF is currently driving the price action, but new all time highs remain far beyond reach. Behind the scenes, however, there is a reason to believe that current moves on Bitcoin USD pair are highly significant. Uh, as Mustache notes, on three week time frames, uh, the 21 period exponential moving average, the EMA, is attempting to cross the 50 period simple moving average of the SMA, uh, a sign that short term price performance is corresponding strongly. The crossover is distinctly unusual. Uh, its last appearance came in 2016. At the time, the three week chart went on to make gains, accumulating, uh, culminating in Bitcoin's old all time high of three grand in December 2017. In addition, the buy signal. Uh, and the super indicator. Uh, in addition, the buy signal super indicator. That's okay. That's 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 the statement. Uh, watch out for the rare signals. Mustache added. So right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Betting on a post ETF come down. As Coin Telegraph continues to report, Bitcoin is giving traders cause for both short-term and long-term optimism. While already near its highest level since April of 2022, Bitcoin the USD has room for further upside price indicators, including daily relative strength index (RSI) and Bollinger Band, suggests that skeptics nonetheless persist with their downside Bitcoin price targets, primarily relying on the hype around the ETF subsiding once the decision on whether to allow them due by January 10th passes, which is tomorrow. Interesting week ahead. Oh, wait, sorry. Among them is the now notorious X trader uh, Capo of Crypto, who maintains that Bitcoin should return to as low as $12,000 in the future. He was also claiming 10, so is it not 10 now, it's 12? Interesting week ahead. ETF news should be released soon. As explained, these days I expect to make, I expect the market to pump first. Bitcoin to 48 to 50, ETH to 25 to 26. Alt should pump more, especially low caps. He told Telegram channel uh, subscribers on January 7th. After this, which should take a few days, the market should reach a very important local top. That's when I will start opening swing short positions, aiming for new lows. <laughs> Um, yeah, but where's the where's the twelve k? Come on, Capo, where's the twelve k? The still only says thirty. An accompanying chart released around the same time highlighted the area around thirty k as the first stop off point for the controversial retracements, and that's how they ended the article. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Well, that's his chart. Okay, Capo. I don't know, man. Like, I don't get anything from that chart. It's just a bunch of guessing, in my opinion. What is this based off of? Whatever. I, guys, I gotta be honest. I think people in, in, in bear runs, I think people post bullish nonsense just for clickbait. Think about Peter Schiff. The dude shits on Bitcoin all the time. And it's made him famous on social media because of it. He, he, he literally uh, farms engagement based off of being bearish. I feel the same way with Capto. This is kind of like, if you are following this guy waiting for 10k 12k you've missed out on significant gains absolutely significant gains it doesn't mean the price won't go down to back to 30 eventually but what i'm saying is is let's go back to the bitcoin chart let's go to the weekly all right i'm gonna drop my lines because i know this is gonna get messy looking But this dude, so Capo's been calling for like 10 or 12K since we were back here at the bottom around 15, 16-ish. With that being said, if you follow this dude's TA and what he's been telling you to do, you've missed out on, oh, I don't know, 184 effing percent. That's bad, guys. I don't understand how people can tell their followers to pay attention to them when their followers are missing out on this and over that's the main point not this could have gone up in a day and have been like okay his his idea is still valid but this is over the course of we'll just start since the first green candle at the bottom three hundred and seventy one days since the bottom almost a year of gains guys why do people listen to these guys that are super bearish when you are clearly in an uptrend i don't know but they should be ashamed of themselves because they hold on to these narratives and push them because i think it's only, i personally think it's only for fucking gauging uh, uh engagement farming engagement but they push these narratives. And if people follow these guys and, and believe in what they're telling them, they're literally ruining their people. Like, like that doesn't mean we still can't roll over and, and be done. This could be done. I don't know. But the trend is up still. And the trend is your friend until the end. And if you were listening to Capo or Peter Schiff, you've literally missed out on almost 200% gains off of the biggest crypto out there. Literally, 200, almost 200%. While everything else is flying off the handle as well. I don't know, man. I think it's fucked up. People shouldn't be doing that. So, with that being said, let's get back to the news, guys. Ew, don't look at my charts. Uh, okay. Ooh, I got bottom good, but still in the red. We'll see what it's going to do. All right. Nothing left to decide. Former SEC chair says Bitcoin ETF is inevitable. 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 It's inevitable. Inevitable. Former SEC chair Jay Clayton says there's no doubt whether the SEC will approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. A former chairman of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, says it's inevitable that a spot Bitcoin ETF will be approved. Speaking on January 8th, uh, in an interview with CNBC, former SEC chair Jay Clayton said that it is it now a foregone conclusion that the SEC will approve the first spot Bitcoin ETF for trading in the United States. Uh, I think approval is inevitable. Uh, there's nothing left to decide. For the last 10 years, the SEC has denied every application for a spot Bitcoin ETF, citing concerns of a potential market manipulation and fraud. However, Clinton now agrees that the ETF approval is imminent. Nothing that the underlying market dynamics for Bitcoin have improved drastically over the last five years. Uh, yeah, five years ago, uh, there were wash sales, uh, there was laddering, there were all sorts of things that you wouldn't want to make available to the general public because 
of the risk, he said. Additionally, Clayton commended the regulator for being where they are, saying that it was a big step forward for the agency to be comfortable with the Bitcoin uh, ETF disclosure for the first time, such as BlackRock and Fidelity. Uh, he added that until now, there hadn't been any adequate level of infrastructure to properly custody and secure Bitcoin in a way that made it accessible to traditional financial market participants. Uh, outside of crypto markets specifically, Clayton praised the development of blockchain technology for its ability to tokenize and trade real world assets. This is a big step, not just for Bitcoin, but for finance generally. If you can tokenize underlying assets and trade that way, that's a potentially significant change across finance, not just in the crypto space. Uh, a spate, a spat of amended S-1 and S-3 filings from prospective Bitcoin ETF issuers flooded into the SEC on January 8th, with issuers disclosing the fees uh, they went to charge on their products, or they want to charge on their products following approval. That's what we're gonna get into in the next story. Bloomberg ETF analyst James S said the influx of an amended filings was a sign that the regulator was accelerating things for this week. Uh, Mr. S and his colleague Eric Balkunas have pinned the chances of a spot Bitcoin ETF at 90% by January 10th in a January 9th post uh, to X like this morning. It's pretty early still. Uh, Mr. S added that the investors could expect further amendments to S-1 and S-3 filings in the following days following the SEC providing additional comments. Um, despite the back and forth of new amendments and comments, he said it was unlikely that these qualify as a delay signal for the ETF. Um, when was this? This is 10 hours ago. Okay, well, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know, man. I gotta be honest. Like they're pushing it up right to the wire. I didn't think they would do this. If it's if it's gonna get approved by the tenth, it's it's right to the wire. Um, let me look on my phone. Sorry, guys. I'm looking at my phone on X just to see if there's anything coming out that that I might have missed. People just saying it's a shake out. No, I'm not seeing. anything about approval sorry guys all right issuers of potential spot bitcoin etfs that are awaiting sec approval have filed amendments to their s-1 forms which include new competitive fee rates some as low as 0.24 percent uh the anticipation for the decision from the united states securities and exchange commission on a spot bitcoin etf continues as multiple applicants filed their final s-1 form amendments on january 8th Valkyrie was the first comply or first company to file its final S-1 amendment, followed by Wisdom Tree, BlackRock, Vanek, and Vesco, and Galaxy, Grayscale, Arc, and 21 shares. Among the amendments, many of the applicants also included lower fees, raising the bar for competitiveness between the various ETF offerings. Uh, the lowest sponsor fee for currently for the currently filed ETFs is from Bitwise, with no fee for the first six months and the first $1 billion in assets. Holy shnikes. Followed by a 0.24% fee. This is followed by ARK Invest. Dude, that's their big, they, they want market share. This is followed by ARK Invest and 21 shares also listing no fees for the first six months or until $1 billion in assets, after which they will enforce a fee of 2.25%. Ooh, tricky, tricky. 
Uh, Bloomberg market analyst Eric Valkun has called the drop in ARC and 21 shares fees from 0.8 to 0.25 breathtaking. Valkun has said the fee wars are intense, but that's another level. Van Eck listed at 0.25, Fee Franklin 0.29, and Fidelity at 0.39. Global Asset Manager BlackRock said it, its fee for the iShare ETF at 0.2. Uh, for the first 12 months or until the first $5 billion, uh, then hiked up to 0.3 uh, as the ongoing fee. Jesus. Hungry, hungry hippos, guys. Uh, on the higher end of the fees, Wizard Tree comes in at 0.5. Galaxy and Vesco offered the first six months with no fee, followed by 0.59. Valkyrie has a 0.8 fee and hashtags has a sponsor fee of 0.9. Gay Grayscale, sorry. Grayscale dropped its fee from 2% to its new listed fee of 1.5%, which currently comes in as the most expensive from the pack. Uh, research and market analyst James S. Post on X to be mindful that these are not finalized and said he wouldn't be surprised by even more fee drops. Interesting. Amid the revisions to the spot Bitcoin ETS, Valkuna said it would be interesting to see if this influences cryptocurrency exchanges to respond with their own fee cuts before it's too late. Valkuna also posted a reminder that the temporary free waivers historically haven't moved the needle, the needle, the needle, moved the needle, moved the needle much, and advisors tend to focus on the regular fees because they are long-term investors. However, he did say it could possibly matter in this case given that the etfs all do the same thing uh at the final amendments come as the final amendments come in the next stage in the decision making process is anticipated by a vote by the sec commissioners markets have been forecasting the debut of the etf on or around january 11th when did it change from january 10th to january 11th because i haven't read that anywhere markets have been forecasting the debut of its no we've been saying the 10th so now who's saying the 11th? Who is it? Someone tell me. I have no idea. Okay. Guys, Bitcoin went last time. Woo-wee! <laughs> now that candle's flipping green. But that's bullish, guys. I gotta be honest. If this closes a green candle, at, uh, well, I am on the, the, the four hour, but if this closes a green candle, that's good. <clears throat> that's bullish. That means they tried to push it down and it got bought up faster than free stuff. Let's go to the one hour. <clears throat> one hour flipping green. Let's go to 30 minute. We are beating our heads right there. Right around 40. Oh, well. Nope, there it goes. Let's go to the 15. Two greens, one blood diamond. 15 gave it to you. Told you what was going on. <clears throat> 10. 10 looking real good. There it goes. 7. Trend change. Rock and a roll. Look at that. Bounce. I mean, yes, a wick, but we bounced uh, uh, open and close. Or close and open. We clopen at 45846. Perfect. Oh, damn near perfectly. Awesome. Uh, it is looking like right around uh, 46821 is turning itself into some kind of resistance. Keep your guys' eye on that. But a sideways Bitcoin for now for a few days would be great for the rest of the market. It'll definitely uh, give some breathing room to the alts to let them run. So I wouldn't be mad at it. If we move sideways for a few days, I will be happy. Outside of that, guys, that's all I've got for you this morning. If you do enjoy the content I provide for you here every morning on Boring Crypto IO, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel, turn on your bell for notifications so you know when I do post videos, watch the videos, share the videos on all your social platforms, and above all, if there's anything you can do to help spread the adoption of crypto and help grow the channel, please, guys, like the channel. Excuse me, like the video. Almost got that all out with messing it up. Like, 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 guys. It's easy, it's freezy, peasy, lemon squeezy, and I'll see you bright and easy tomorrow morning. I'm out of here.